Winning a national title in college hoops is extremely difficult as many programs have never even done it once in their school history. And winning back-to-back -back titles is something that's only happened twice since the new era of the NCAA tournament in 1979 until tonight. Not only did UConn defeat Purdue to get their second national title in a row, but they did it in dominating fashion, pretty much making the NCAA tournament look easy. This by the numbers is by far the most absurd run we've ever seen from a college basketball team. And I'm here to tell you the story of how they did it again. If you enjoy great college sports content, make sure to subscribe so you never miss out on another upload. This is UConn's sixth national title since 1999. Again, they are obviously one of the top programs in college basketball, but let's briefly summarize what happened in 2023. The storyline around the UConn Huskies was a lot different last year than it is now. In fact, they were a four seed going into the tournament and not many people had them as title favorites at all. In fact, they had gone through stretches of their regular season and conference schedule where they weren't playing well, they had lost three games in a row, and they lost the semifinals in the Big East tournament to Marquette. As the Huskies went into the NCAA tournament, they were 25-8, and eight, but none of that mattered because they went in there and absolutely dominated everyone, winning every single game by 15 points or more. One of the craziest runs we've seen in history. Even in the championship game against number five seeded San Diego State, they won by 17. This performance garnered them plenty of expectations going into the 2024 season. And of course, the most important factor for a defending champ or any team going into a new season is who are you keeping and who are you losing? We are going to get into that in a second. But first, we're going to talk about head coach Danny Hurley. Coach Hurley took over for UConn before the 2018 season. Previously, he had coached at Rhode Island, and the reason why he was coming in, because there was a little bit of a scandal with last head coach for UConn, Kevin Ollie, but it was a completely new era. Hurley's first two seasons with the Huskies were nothing special. He went 16-17 and 17 in 2019, and then in 2020, they went 19-12. and 12. They were a little better. They were a bubble team, possibly could have made the tournament, but of course, COVID happened and no one played. 2021 is when things really started to shift. First of all, UConn joined back into the Big East Conference after playing in the American since 2013. They had a better year. They went 15-8, and made the NCAA tournament, but unfortunately, they lost in the first round. In 2022, they were better, but they did the same exact thing with the first round exit. And of course, 2023, we know what happened. They went all the way. Although Danny Hurley hasn't been coaching that long, only since 2010, he has a 291 and 163 record. He brought two Rhode Island teams to the NCAA tournament where they got wins and moved on to the round of 32. And of course, he's doing his thing with UConn. So let's get into the production that they lost from the 2023 Natty team and move into what they were getting for 2024. Three players who started in the title game versus San Diego State were moving on to pro careers. First, their leading scorer, Adama Sanogo, who had 17.2 points per game and also 7.7 .7 rebounds. He went undrafted, but eventually signed with the Chicago Bulls, and he got a two-way contract. Next, they lost their guard and great shooter, Jordan Hawkins, who went number 14 in the draft. He averaged 16.2 points, 3.8 rebounds, and 1.3 assists. And finally, Andre Johnson, who was another guard. He could do it all. He could play defense. He could pass. He could score. He went number 36 in the draft of the Milwaukee Bucks. Typically, when you lose three starters with the team that makes a deep tournament run, you are screwed. However, UConn was already loaded with a bunch of youth talent that was ready to go for next year. You had rising sophomores like Alex Caravan and Donovan Klingon who were ready to step into bigger roles with the team and as well as some veteran leadership from East Carolina transfer Tristan Newton and also Texas A&M transfer Hassan Diara. Oh, and to add to all that returning sauce, they also had the number six overall recruiting class in college basketball. The class was highlighted by number nine overall player Stefan Castle out of Georgia. He's a shooting guard, five stars, 98 according to 24-7 Sports, and he was all the rave. Everyone knew that Castle was going to make an immediate impact for this Huskies team, but for other recruits such as four stars Solomon Ball, Jalen Stewart, and Jaden Ross, they knew that they were going to develop. Oh, and you can't forget transfer guard Cam Spencer coming over from Rutgers, and he did his thing. 2024 was a lot different from 2023 because this time, the Huskies had expectations, a lot of them. In fact, 
They were ranked number six in the AP poll to start the season, and they quickly lived up to the expectations, going 10-1 in non-conference play, including ranked wins against Texas, North Carolina, and Gonzaga. Unfortunately, they went on the road to Kansas to play in Fog Allen Fieldhouse and came up just short, but we know that Kansas team at the time when they were fully healthy were amazing, and it is very hard to win in Fog Allen. What was made very apparent about this team was the depth of their roster. On any given night, a new player could be the leading scorer. It was Caravan going off. It was Newton. It was Kling, and It was Spencer. Everyone was doing it. But in the first game in Big East Conference play, they actually actually went on the road to face Seton Hall and got blown out losing by 15. This was completely unacceptable as Danny Hurley said. They were 10-2 overall with an 0-1 conference record and y'all should have taken a picture of this because it was never the same. The Huskies finished out the regular season going 18-1 including ranked wins against number 18 Creighton and two top 10 wins against Marquette. This year they were not about to lose in their conference tournament as the number one seed in the Big East they beat Xavier in the quarterfinals, St. John's in the semis and Marquette all by huge margins. They had found their stride, they were extremely hot, they were looking very reminiscent of the team that ran through the tournament last year and they were the number one overall seed for the 2024 big dance but this is where things actually get tricky because it seems like the team that won the championship the year before was cursed in the very next year the last time a team went back to back in college hoops was in 06 and 07 led by head coach Billy Donovan with players like Joakim Noah and Al Horford. But in the 17 years after that, no reigning champ had even made it past the Sweet 16. So on paper, it seems to most that, oh, UConn's the number one overall seed. No surprise, they should get to the Final Four easy. But it's actually very, very difficult to do when you win the year prior. But for reasons that I mentioned prior, the coaching staff, the collective roster, this team is built different. First, I'll take it round by round and see who they beat to get to the championship game. And second, we will talk about that margin of victory because it is unreal. In the first round, they beat 16-seeded Stetson, no problem, nope. No FDU, no UMBC stuff. Then in the second round against number nine, Northwestern, a great team, by the way, they won 75 to 58. Then in the Sweet 16, a rematch of the title game with fifth seeded San Diego State, they won by 30 points. Then in the Elite Eight, they were facing three-seeded Illinois with a great offense. They won 77 to 52. Yes, they held that offense to 52 points. Oh yeah, one little thing. They went on a 30 to zero run in that game against the Illini. Then in the final four with four-seeded Alabama, no one expected them to get there. They won by 14, beating the spread yet again, no problem. Although this game was close, they pulled away at the end. After the game against Bama, UConn was already the first program ever to win 11 consecutive NCAA tournament games by double-digit margins. And tonight, it is set in stone after beating Purdue and getting the back-to-back -back national titles. According to the numbers, the margin of victory, it is the best tournament run ever seen. And did we need numbers to know that? Come on, guys, we did. And even if you watched only 10 minutes of a UConn game this season, you can tell that is something special. But before I end out this video, will I be in the same exact spot in April of 2025 making a three-peat video on UConn? Well, we will see. According to NBA draft experts, Klingon, Caravan, Castle, and Newton all have a chance to go in the first round. That was the story of the most dominant team in college basketball history. Thank you guys so much for reaching the end of the video. I've been Saturday Shenanigans, and I'll see you guys soon.